Welcome to the second episode of the MWM service tutorials entitled Do It The Smart Way. Today, we're going to take a look at the subject of valve clearance. But before we start checking the valve clearance, I'd like to share some safety instructions. Please don't forget your safety gloves and your protective goggles. Before we start checking the valve clearance, it would be good to wait until the genset cools down a bit. When I say cool, I mean temperatures of below 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, so first of all, we remove the oil filter in order to insert the turning device. Feel free to use an oil filter wrench if the filter is too tight. Then we remove the lid. Below, you can see the opening for our turning device. We insert it, and then fasten it with the same screws. We just turn it slightly, just like that. Okay, so now the turning device has been attached. Now we remove the ignition cable, then of course the cables of our combustion chamber temperature sensor. The spark plug guard rail has to be removed as well. So, once it has been disassembled, we can take it off and just leave it here. Then we remove the screws of the cylinder head cover. When you lift it off, take care not to damage the cable of the combustion chamber temperature sensor. Now we're going to do the same with all other covers. So, B1 TDC has been adjusted. Now we need to check whether this is the correct TDC. It's quite simple. Cylinder number one should be an ignition TDC, and cylinder number four, the partner cylinder, should be in the overlap phase. Is that the case? Cylinder number four, both valves are tight. Therefore, both valves should be free on cylinder 1. That's been done too. Then we start checking it. The exhaust valve should have a valve clearance of 0.7 mm. This is definitely too small. So let's loosen the check nut. Now we turn the setting screw out a little bit until our thickness gauge fits in comfortably. Then we fasten it so much that we can still easily move to and fro and then block the check nut slightly. We hold the setting screw with the screwdriver and fasten the check nut with 45 Newton meters. Another check. Everything okay. Now we need to check the inlet side. Here we need a clearance of 0.3 millimeters. Here too, the valve clearance is insufficient. Same clearances on the other side. According to the ignition sequence, the next cylinder would be cylinder number three. 
So we need to set cylinder number two to overlap. As previously, we do this with our turning device, turning the engine anti-clockwise. Now the cylinder is ready. The exhaust valve has been adjusted. The inlet valve has been adjusted. Then the next one. So now the last valve has been adjusted. Now we need to reassemble everything. First, we need to return the cylinder head cover. We pass the spark plug connector through. Connect the combustion chamber sensor correctly. We slightly fasten the screws. Then we tighten them with 20 Newton meters. Next, we attach the spark plug guardrail. We close the two shears. Insert the screws and tighten them with 12 Newton meters. We put the spark plug connector back on then the combustion chamber temperature sensor. Then we do the same for the other three cylinders. Good. To avoid collateral damage, please don't forget to remove the turning device from the machine. Finally, we attach the oil filter. The oil filter shouldn't be fastened too tightly. The maximum should be 25 Newton meters. Okay. So that's all for today. I hope I've been able to explain the subject of valve clearance in a way that will enable you to apply the steps. I'm looking forward to the next episode of Do It The Smart Way.